Hello there, my name is Ellis Vlad and I'm from Mining for Games and today I'm going to be starting my uh, C++ programming tutorial or really restarting because I started this a while ago on the Manta Games Co channel and I thought it would be nice just to bring it here and go a bit further with it because last time I only went to I think episode 6 or 7 um, and then I had to go on holiday or something like that and then I got a new computer and then all kinds of stuff cropped up so I kind of lost that uh, series this one, however, should go for a little bit longer because I'm on my summer holidays at the moment and I've got tons of free time, so I should be able to record a good few episodes. Well, by a good few I mean quite a bit. So I'm going to get started right from the basics, uh, which is to install your compiler uh, and to test it. Uh, the one we're going to be using is called MingW. Um, I remember in the last series people did ask me to use a different compiler, um, but the reason I want to use MingW is because it's fast, it's dead simple, and it works. Um, lots of other compilers you need to configure loads and you've got big project files and blah 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 but with MingW you just download it and it works straight away. So to get it you just quick google search MingW or MinGW, I don't know, uh, just click on the first link and somewhere down on the left you should find a little button that says downloads. Click that and you're taken to a SourceForge page um, and you get to this. Now you can either go and find it in one of these folders or you can just click this button here to download the latest version. Um, once it's downloaded, I've already got it downloaded so I don't need to download it again. Uh, you just open it up uh, and I shouldn't have closed that. Hang on a second, let me just find it. MingW. There it is, just click on it, opens it up and just hit run. Um, now when it's running, you get a little installation screen like this. Uh, I'll close that, uh, just hit next and next again. And you uh, just leave that as default and hit next. Accept, as you always do, don't really need to read it, but it's just, you know, your standard stuff and choose where you want to install it. I'm just going to leave it as this because it's simple and easy to get to. Hit next and you can choose if you want it in the start menu or not. I'm going to put it in the start menu. Why not? Once again, next. Now this one, don't hit next yet. You need to make sure that you tick C compiler and C++ compiler. The others don't really matter. If you want them, you can get them, but C and C++ is what we're going to be working with. Hit next one last time and then you come to a confirmation screen with all the stuff. Um, then just make sure you've got exactly the same stuff as me. This one might be slightly different, but mainly you've got to make sure that that is exactly the same. Hit next, and then you choose a source that you want to get it from. Uh, sorry, no you don't. You, it will just install. It may take a little bit longer than it did for me, because um, I've already got it installed, so it didn't need to really install anything. Uh, but once it's uh, downloaded and installed everything, you just untick that box and click finish. That's it, you've got your compiler installed, and it works. But at the moment it only works from that one directory that we installed it in, and I'll show you that now. So if I go to my computer, C, um, w, and bin. In the bin file, you have all your compiler stuff in here. Now if we open up a command prompt in this window, and we, where we do that, we just type in cmd in the top bar there, and that will open up a command prompt window. In here we can type in g++. Now that's our compiler, g++.exe, and you'll find that file somewhere in here. There it is. It's not very big, but that compiles all of our programs. When we run it, we're going to get a message saying, no input files found. That means the compiler works and it's installed and everything like that. But what we want to do now is make sure that we can access this file from anywhere. So say if I was to open up command prompt on my desktop and wanted to compile something there, it would also find G++. So when we do that, we're just going to make a file on our desktop and we're going to just call it, um, well, we're going to make a folder. And we're going to put all our projects in there because it's good to be organized when we're doing this. So C++ programming tutorial. And if we were to open cmd here, command prompt, and then we were trying to uh, do g++, because we're not in that directory that we installed it in, when we press enter, it's going to say that it's not recognized internal or external. That basically means that it can't find g++.exe. Now we're going to need to tell Windows where to find it. And that's quite simple to do. We just click on start, right click on computer, and click on properties. Now if you're on XP, uh, when you right click on my computer and click properties, you'll be taken straight to an advanced system settings page, which is right here. But if you're on Windows 7, you just click on the advanced system settings. I'll pop up a window like this. Um, in XP, you'll be straight, taken straight to this and you won't see this one behind me. Uh, and then you just go to the advanced tab and hit environment variables. Now in this second list of things, you need to find the one that says path. Uh, for me, that's going to be a little bit down, but for you, it should be reasonably near the top. Click path and hit edit. And this is basically where uh, Command Prompt finds all of your uh, programs. So we're going to need to find where we've installed our G++ and put it on the end of here. So let's just uh, head back to our Explorer. Click on C, 
Ming W and get into that Bing folder, bin folder, sorry. And in here we find our G++, so we're just going to copy this directory, C Ming W bin, it might be different for you. Copy it, right click, copy. And in here, you're going to put a semicolon after whatever's there, and just paste it right on onto the end. And that's it, that's all you need to do, just hit OK a few times, and close all these windows. And you'll also need to restart CMD, so close that too. Now, wherever, whatever folder we go into, when we open command prompt, we should be able to find our G++. There we go, no input files, which means it works, and we're not even in that mingw directory. You can do this for any program you like, so if I wanted to uh, install a game and I wanted to run it from command prompt for some reason, I don't know why I'd want to do that, but in case I did, you'd do it the same way. Um, so it's just something useful to know if you want to remember that, if you don't, then, well, yeah. So we've got G++ installed, our compiler is working, and just to make that doubly sure, we're going to make a simple project file, and we're just going to uh, in compile it and test it. Sorry, I said project file, I meant source file, because when we're using mingw, we don't need project files, that's how brilliant it is. So we just need one file in here, and we're going to call it main.cpp. Now for me, I have these extensions already enabled on my computer, but if you don't, I'll show you a way that you can uh, make a main.cpp file, um, because if you try and type in main.cpp, it will still be a notepad file if you don't have the extensions enabled. So the way we make a file is, if I just delete this one, I'm going to go to notepad, file, save as. Now I'm going to go to wherever I want to um, save this file, which is my C programming tutorial, and in here I write main.cpp, and make sure that the save as type is set to all files. Then when you hit save, it will also save it as a main.cpp file. So we got that file now. And, uh, now you can open whatever um, code editor you'd like. I'd recommend something like Notepa uh, Notepad++ or Programmer's Notepad. I use Programmer's Notepad just because, um, well, I've used it in the past and I've sort of got used to it. But you can use whatever you like. I recommend not using Notepad because it doesn't highlight, highlight your syntax. What I mean by that is if I was to open Programmer's Notepad and I'm editing a CPP file, it will automatically change to C slash C++ um, uh, syntax, and if I was to type something like um, hi equals blah blah blah, you see it's got this in purple, just so it's a little bit easier, just so if by accident I had another apostrophe, um, uh, whatever that thing's called, uh, in there, then it will tell me that I've got one in there and that I've made a mistake, because that's no longer purple. Uh, so yeah, it's best to just have a um, whatever you like, just programmer's notepad, notepad++, plus plus. Uh, there are others but I can't think of any at the moment. Uh, just get one of those and you'll be good to go. Um, pretty e easy to install, just install it and it will work straight away. So I'm going to make a simple file here. You don't need to know what this is yet, I'll probably explain it in the next few tutorials what I'm writing and what it does, but you can just copy it down or download, it, or download this file from the um, website. Uh, link will be in the description, of course. So, it's really hard to type while um, talking, but I'll try and do it anyway. Okay, uh, return zero. Alright, so that's going to do nothing. I'm just going to put in this. Uh, it works. Okay, uh, save that. That's all that we need in our file. We'll just put a couple of um, new lines on the end because sometimes the compiler doesn't like it if we don't. So that's all we need in our file. Uh, I'll explain what all this does later on, but you can pretty much guess uh, what's going to happen is it's just going to write it works to the screen. And then it's just going to end the program. So I've saved that. Um, it's saved right there. You'll see that it's 99 bytes. Well, um, and we're just going to compile it like so. In G++, it's quite simple to compile. You just do G++, then all the input files that you want to put, so main.cpp, and then you do minus O, and then the output file. Minus O stands for output, so just main. You don't need to put the exe ending because G++ will automatically uh, recognize that we're using Windows and that Windows uses exe endings, so it will put it on there for us. You don't need to put that on there, just hit enter, let it do its thing for a little bit, and we've already got an error. Right, well, um, I found out what the problem was. I don't know why it happened, but uh, I closed Programmer's Notepad um, and opened this in just normal Notepad, and there was a hash here for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I don't know what that is, but it shouldn't be. Um, and then when I tried to recompile it, it compiled fine. So I'm just going to open that back up again. Just make sure there's no hash here. I don't know why there would be. Wait, can I even see that? Uh, I probably couldn't see it. I don't know. 
Um, but when you do that and try and compile it again, then it should compile fine. You get no output, but you get a new file called main.exe. Now, if you try and run it, it will flicker up on the screen way too fast for you to even see. So in uh, command prompt, you're just going to type main. And that's going to call our main.exe. It's going to automatically recognize that should be an exe ending. And just hit enter. And you see it says it works and then comes back to command prompt. That's basically what our program did. So that means that our compiler works and that everything's fine and dandy and it's all great. And we can continue to start writing our programs. Now, before we go any further, we're going to make sure that we're always uh, organized in where we put all of our projects. So I'm just going to close all of this and make a new folder in here, and I'm going to call it Lesson Zero, because that's what this is, really. Um, and I'm going to put those two files into there, just so a little bit more structured. Now, one more thing before I end the lesson, I'm going to make a compiling um, script, so I don't have to go through all the stuff of in CMD writing uh, the code that was G++, blah, 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 blah. It will just do it for me when I run that uh, program, so or that script. So we're going to make that file now. Um, Right-click, New, uh, anything, um, and we're going to call it uh, build.bat, and get rid of the ending. Of course, if you remember, um, if you can't edit the ending, just go to Notepad and make your own. Um, but I'll, I'll try and find out how to change it. I can't remember. I think it's something in Organize, Folder and Search Options, View. And then somewhere here, there. If you untick this box, hide extensions for known file dump, file types, then you'll get the same thing as me, and you'll always see the endings. Um, and that way, you can just edit them a lot easier. Um, but in this file build.bat, we're just going to edit that, and it should pop up in Notepad. Now, anything you write in here is what it's going to execute in the command prompt. So the first thing we're going to do is, well, I'll I'll just write it out, and then I'll explain what it means. So echo off. What this does is just going to stop, um, it's going to make sure that the command prompt doesn't write all this rubbish about uh, what it is, copyrights, blah, 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 what directory we're in. It's just going to give us a blank window. So echo off. G++ main.cpp minus o main. That's going to run our command that compiles this cpp file into main.exe. And then we're going to put a pause. What that does is going to, uh, I can show you what that does. Well, it just says press any key to continue. So it just freezes the command prompt until we press a button and then it will carry on doing whatever it was that we were doing. And we're going to type in main and then another pause. And uh, that's going to run our program and then it's going to pause once more. And at the very end, we're just going to write um, build.bat. So what this is going to do now is every time we run this, it's going to turn off all this rubbish about all the copyrights, all rights reserved, it's going to compile, it's going to wait for us to press a key, it's going to run our program, wait for us to press a key again, and then run the program again. So it will compile again, and then blah, blah, blah. Um, in fact, yeah, that's fine. So yeah, that's our um, building script. We can just save that now, close it, and now when we run it, it's going to open up our command prompt. Okay, so that's, we'll run through what that's doing now. So we've echoed off, so we don't get any rubbish onto the screen. We've already compiled and we've paused. So it's compiled our file and paused. Hit enter, it's run the file, and then it's done the pause again, except we don't have a new line, so it's done on the same line, but we'll change that in the source code later on. And then we hit enter again, and then it's compiled again, and it's run again, and it's compiled again, and it's gonna keep doing that uh, forever. So that's good, okay, it works. And to close it, we just hit close, and that's it. So now what we've got is we've found our um, uh, compiler, we've installed it, it works, we've tested it, and we've made a building script. So that is quite a bit for the first episode, actually. And I can prove to you that this works just by deleting that, run it, that's already compiled, and that's already run. So it works, and it's all fine. And we're going to be using this script in every single episode now. Uh, we might modify it a little bit later on, but for now, that is fine. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this first episode, or lesson zero. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to be covering some uh, basic functions and variable types. So I hope to see you next time. Um, Ellis Vlad, signing out.